thank you. So, so there was a trick, the second part of the title is in French. Indeed, if you want, if you can ask a question in French, for me, English or French are almost the same. I just uh, thought that uh, if the talk was recorded, maybe it could be go in English on the website and be available for everybody. But feel free to ask your question in French or uh, do as you wish to interrupt me and, uh, and ask questions. So I will start with a small part with the slides and then do most of the course at the blackboard and then maybe the la very last part will be also with the slides. And so the, the plan of the talk is to, of the course, let's say mini course, is to speak a little bit about uh, subremanent geometry, which is uh, the, the ge geometry underlying the, the uh, uh, let's say, the Eisenberg group, who, who is uh, the main actor of the course. And, uh, and uh, so I will speak about a little bit about this. Maybe you heard also about this uh, subremanent geometry also yesterday in the talk of uh, Frederic Jean. And uh, so uh, along the way we will speak uh, about uh, geometry and this uh, specific kind of geometry. And at the end I will try to uh, show some applications to image reconstruction uh, of this geometry. So this gives us some links with other uh, topics you, you met in the, in the other courses. So, uh, since I am speaking, so the, the slides are in French, so this makes things more mixed. And uh, uh, geometry means a lot of things, so maybe to speak about geometry of Eisenberg group. Uh, so Eisenberg group means that there is a group, so uh, what means geometry? L let's start with some, uh, some discussion. So geometry means a lot of things, even historically, in not only in language, but also in math, it means uh, different things. For instance, at the very beginning, geometry was uh, the study of the space, and maybe then uh, the, um, was developed some algebraic viewpoints, so it's uh, the study of transformations of the space. So geometry uh, may, may mean a lot of things. At the very uh, uh, origin, say, of this word, there is a, a measure of the heart, and, uh, or the earth, maybe, I should say. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so this is more close to my viewpoint, so meaning that uh, we will have a space and some notion, so some notion of distance to measure things. And uh, this distance will be related to to the movement we will uh, we can do in this space, so some path, some some curves, and uh, sub-Riemannian uh, will mean uh, essentially. So you can keep this as an idea of all will happen is uh, uh, related to uh, a constraint on the movement, so on the. Uh, set of path we can uh, use to move, but uh, uh, there is no constraint on the position. So this is the philosophy more or less on the geometry we will see. And uh, also uh, the word space here is a little bit vague. So let me uh, try to give another idea. So we start the first part of the course, with not with the Eisenberg group, even if it was in the title, but with another example where, where we will do some computations. So uh, space, you may think, or at least this is one of my favorite way of thinking to what is a space, as a space uh, of configuration of some uh, object. So for instance, in this case, I, I have a picture of a, a car or some model of a car. You can think to, uh, to this kind of, uh, of uh, object, which has two wheels. And uh, mm, so uh, with this uh, kind of vehicle, you can do two kind of movements. If you move the two wheels, uh, let's say forward, you will move forward. If you move the two wheels in the opposite way, you will have uh, your car that is rotating on, uh, on, uh, on the same, staying in the same position. So uh, uh, the space of configuration of this object is uh, three-dimensional, let's say. So let me draw a picture. So we have two coordinates, x, y. And then here I have my car with two wheels. So of course this is a model for a car, or you can think. 
And then uh, uh, to fix the position of this object, you need three information. One is, uh, let's say, two are the coordinates of, uh, let's say, the body center of the, the car. And then you will need an angle, which I call theta, that is uh, specifying the orientation of the car. So somehow this uh, is the meaning of three dimensions. So I need three information, three, three numbers. And this, uh, if you want to say uh, what is this vector, you can say that this vector belongs to the product R2 times S1. So the first two coordinates gives the position on the plane and the third one is a, a, a position uh, let's say on the, on the circle, so it's the orientation. So we have, uh, let's say, three degrees of freedom, speaking some mechanical language, but only uh, two uh, real movements, let's say, because uh, as I showed you uh, here, uh, uh, these are the only two movements we can do. What is the third movement? which somehow is not uh, possible. You, you know very well when you have your car, you cannot move uh, in, uh, in uh, let's say, in the direction that is orthogonal uh, to your position, okay? Otherwise, uh, I can show you some uh, uh, video, we would be able to park our car in this way. So, uh, Okay, so we know that uh, this is not possible. This would be the, uh, let's say, perfect parking. And we, do not, we know that this is not possible. At the same time, the experience uh, shows us that even this movement is not possible. Uh, we can, uh, we can um, park the car. So I'm just uh, showing you, but I think you know very well how you can park the car, but here this is a, a, a somehow existence theorem uh, <laughs> of, a, of a solution of our problem. And uh, uh, what is interesting is that uh, uh, if we understand uh, how to do uh, uh, this parking, indeed, uh, we are somehow controlling our uh, car, our uh, dynamic system also, also let me say, you may be uh, encountered also yesterday this word uh, control system, but I will go back uh, later. And uh, this could be useful also to, uh, to have uh, a car that is able to park uh, without uh, a human. So uh, here we have the example of uh, a guy that now is getting out of the car and then the car will park without any exterior help. So that's interesting. You see that uh, in this example we will so uh, meet geometry, but not only geometry. Somehow this kind of problem will be related to control and also a uh, problem coming from an uh, engineer, let's say. And, uh, um, Okay, maybe I go back to, to this. And, uh, and so for uh, this uh, situation, the number of parameter is uh, the number of um, degrees of freedom, say the dimension is three. We have only two movements. And, uh, but uh, uh, what I've said uh, tells you that uh, with these two movements, still we can reach every position and then we will do some computation on this uh, and still thinking about uh, uh, space of configuration of course this one is a uh, three-dimensional but we can go in also in our dimension for instance if you have a car uh, which has a, uh, a trailer so a car with attached a trailer here so you will have then a mechanical system that in this case will have dimension 5. Okay, so I will let you think why is dimension 5. Uh, so in this case is dimension 5, a uh, car with a trailer, because more or less you have one car, which is 3, and then uh, you have to specify uh, on the circle, let's say, of length, the distance of the two cars where you have the trailer and then also orientation of the trailer. 
and uh, something also more complicated, for instance, uh, uh, an airplane in the space. So in this case, it will be uh, six dimension because you have to fix a point and then fix the position of a rigid body. So you have an extra dimension. So in this case, it's dimension six. And uh, of course, uh, uh, here a movement of the car will correspond to a movement, a curve on this space. So mm, in abstract way, uh, movement of our mechanical object will correspond to a curve in this space. Uh, a movement of the airplane in the space will be a curve in the six dimensional space parametrizing the position. So what we are saying is that in this space, not all the curves will correspond to admissible movement. So if we stay in this space and we think to curves in this space, let me uh, have a look to a picture that I want to use later. So I put x here, y positive y here and, and theta. So it means that not all curves will be uh, curves that represents movement of the car. Okay, so I will be uh, back on this. And, um, and maybe I get out of this and uh, go to computations. So. Okay, so uh, what are the uh, movements that are allowed? So if we think to uh, curves, so first movement is uh, rotation while staying on the same position. So in this case, we will have an initial position x0, y0, and theta of t will be theta zero plus t. Let's say that this is a, a movement, okay? And uh, the second movement is uh, is a um, translation in the direction of theta. So we have theta, which is not moving, fixed theta zero, initial position is this one, and then we will add a translation in this, uh, in this direction, okay? So if you want to write uh, differential equations satisfied by this, uh, for the first movement, we can say that uh, we have this differential equation. So here, dot means derivative with respect to t. So this is the differential equation coming from this. And uh, uh, in this case, we will have, we will have simply uh, theta dot, which is 0, because theta is constant. And then x dot is uh, cosine theta and y dot is sine of theta. So these are the differential equations describing the two movements uh, that we have uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in these situations. So uh, mm, let me write here, of course, uh, what we can do, uh, what is exactly what we are doing while we are parking a car. We are not just doing one movement uh, or the other. We mix up a little bit the two things. So uh, we can write uh, a differential equation in this form. Let me put u1 and u2 here. Okay, so uh, this is a system of uh, differential equations. And uh, uh, here, u1, u2 uh, 
are called sometimes controls because are exactly uh, our uh, way represent the way we act on our uh, car and uh, uh, indeed uh, you can think to this as a, a constants or a piecewise constants or maybe uh, functions that depends on t on time also because of what you will do you will also uh, act depending on time and uh, maybe not only smooth but you want uh, also some low regularity uh, for um, for these controls for instance if you want piecewise constant uh, they are not smooth but uh, indeed in this case it uh, it is enough to take uh, this be an infinity functions so this means uh, uh, measurable and uh, uh, essentially bounded so uh, you don't really need a uh, uh, big regularity for these functions depending on t to have solutions of this differential equation so this is not uh, uh, really important in what uh, i mean i'm not going into these technical things but just to keep in mind this is a kind of uh, uh, this is a, what we call a control system so what is a control system is a differential equation where we have uh, controls so some parameters that we can change in this case they are a function of time and we have uh, some uh, uh, infinitesimal movements you see that these are the differential equations that comes out from the actual movements and uh, from this differential equation i extracted somehow these uh, uh, vectors that uh, are actually vector fields so i don't know if you already met this word uh, vector field but vector field I mean somehow uh, infinitesimal movement and comes out from differential equation. Infinitesimal in the sense that uh, you can build a differential equation and then integrate and compute the actual uh, movement, let's say. So um, what do represents these two uh, infinitesimal movements? Uh, first one is uh, rotation and the second one is uh, translation. Okay, so um, if you think to these geometric uh, transformations, rotation and translations, these two uh, uh, transformations do not commute. Okay, if you first uh, rotate and then translate, is not the same as to translate and then rotate. You will not get to the same point. And uh, this is what happens here. It's not uh, a true uh, transformation on the space, but it's a, a, a path. And so what I want to do is uh, to uh, compute, uh, to show that uh, these two movements do not commute and also to compute the, de the defect. So what is the difference? So uh, to quantify somehow the, uh, this difference. So maybe I'll do this. To post to There's also a third one. A third one. I wanted to postpone at maximum the time where I have to put it down. <laughs> no, we will see. Okay, here are two, but there are three. Ah, okay, good. And uh, mm, so what I wanted to say is that uh, uh, to show that uh, something uh, do not commute, what you do, mm, let's say, is ta you take two things, you do compute A times B, and you want to see that this is not the the same as b times a okay so but uh, this is uh, the same to compute uh, what i will do is uh, this okay in the group this you can do is the same check okay so and uh, and uh, what is this so this is to check commutativity And uh, so what we will do is exactly to, uh, to do uh, a first movement, let's say corresponding to uh, B, and then a second movement, A, and then the first movement back is B minus 1, and then A minus 1, and to see what is happening.
what is happening. So I will do this computation maybe uh, here. Okay, so let's try to use this. Easier than what I thought. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, let us start from a position. Take an initial position, x0, y0, theta0. And then do the first movement. So let me uh, use a letter B for this. So let's say that this is, uh, uh, the I will do first this. A and B, and follow this. So first apply B, and uh, we arrive to x0 plus cosines of theta0 t, y0 plus uh, sines of theta0 t, and theta0 is not changing. Okay? And then use A. A will be the same, but theta 0 we will be added by t, okay? So. so when I'm saying I'm using A and B, actually I should specify also what is the choice of time. So let's say I use all the same time t, okay? So I will use four times the t. And then I go back, b minus 1, b minus 1, so what I should do is to take the previous and subtract uh, t times cosinus of the angle, but of the previous angle, okay? So here I will have cosines of theta 0 plus t times t. You agree? So it is the previous, and then I subtract this because I go for time minus t. Now, here it will be the same. And the last one will be theta 0 plus t. So I'm doing this computation uh, as an exercise, but. And then. The last one is simple because I have just to remove a t in the theta, so it will be the same. And theta zero here, okay? So we'll have the same expression. So what is uh, the result? Let me put it, uh, uh, let me put it here. And write uh, uh, as a column vector to, to use uh, all the space. I will have x0, y0, theta0, plus here there is nothing. Here when you uh, look to this at order uh, 1 this removes. Okay? At order 1 there is no, if you do asymptotic expansion, let's say, this will start with t sinus theta zero and then higher order, okay? So there is no uh, term in t, okay? But there is a term of order t square, which comes from the derivative, more or less, of this cosinus of theta here and sinus here. So, indeed, what you have is a t square times sinus of theta 0, minus cosinus of theta 0, 0, okay? And then higher order. Okay, do you agree? It's just a Taylor expansion. So why I'm computing a Taylor expansion? To, uh, to show you uh, the main uh, correction, okay? What is uh, this correction? Is uh, again an infinitesimal movement, 
which describes the defect of commutativity of the two movements we had. Okay? It is not occasional that there is no uh, term of order t. Maybe we will see later that is always the case when you do this uh, game with the differential equations or vector fields. And this is indeed uh, an, another vector field uh, that is also called uh, Lie bracket, but uh, we will give meaning to this word maybe later. And uh, uh, what does it represent? It represents, if you write down the differential equation as here, if you write it down, this is exactly the movement that is orthogonal to the car. Okay? And uh, indeed, what we are doing, we are exactly parking our car. So to park our car, more or less, what you do is uh, you go a little bit in your direction, you turn, you go back, and then you go again in the original position. So this is saying, the philosophy is saying uh, that uh, even if at each moment, at each instant, you can just do two movements, Finally, you can go in three directions, okay? But uh, there is another thing that is important to keep in mind, that uh, we used uh, four, uh, four movements of size t, so if it, this is a kind of energy we are using, this is a 4t, and what we get out is a movement of size t square in this t square in the, let's say, uh, non admissible direction, because somehow this is the non admissible. And mm, this is uh, important because, uh, so this is saying uh, that uh, the obstruction actually is visible. Uh, is not visible in the sense that uh, there is a position, constraint of position, but there is uh, uh, somehow difficulty that is uh, uh, computable, let's say. And uh, uh, what about... Uh, uh, let's say, picture of what is happening here. So if I take again the picture as uh, I did before, x, y, and theta, and assume that uh, we do this and we try to visualize what we have done uh, on, uh, 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 maybe this, on, um, on a picture. So, Let's uh, think that uh, initial position is zero, okay? What does it mean? It means that we are at the origin and uh, the, the car is uh, like this. Okay, horizontal with this vector. So then what, uh, what we do? First, we translate, so we, uh, we go further a little bit in the direction of x for time t. Then I am changing angle, so the angle is increasing for time t. Then I go back, but now when I go back I change the position, so my movement will not be on a line that is parallel, but is a little bit different here. And then I go back to angle equal to zero, okay? And there is a defect here, and what we are measuring is exactly this defect, okay? So the fact that we are not going back to the same place is exactly the fact that these two movements are not uh, commutative, okay? And uh, so here, to go back to what I already said, so I'm maybe repeating same things, different number of times, but uh, is to fix ideas, is that not every curve here is a curve that represents the movement of the car. So only some curves. For instance, 
uh, if uh, you start from the position that is zero here what you can do you can just go in the x direction or the vertical direction so at zero the only allowed movement are those that are tangent to a plane that is uh, in this way okay so if uh, we use this notation so let's say dx dy and d theta to denote the vector of the canonical basis okay then what i'm saying is that at each point uh, we can move uh, only tangent to the plane uh, let me write in this way span or vect if you want the french way of d theta cosine theta dx plus sine theta dy okay so this is just a, a notation for vectors that maybe we will, we will have a meaning also later and uh, what is this plane is a plane if you uh, see is a plane that always contain vertical directions but is rotating when you move uh, uh, and change theta okay so it's just a plane that if you follow for instance this vertical line is a plane that is rotating and uh, and our curves indeed are curves uh, let's say the curves that correspond to real movement of the car are curves that are always tangent to these planes okay if those planes were for instance always vertical at every point in this case we were uh, we would be confined to uh, some specific positions for instance if you think not to have as a loud movement a and b but just b and let's call this c just these two in this case you see very well that the angle is never changing so of course if i can use only b and c uh, here i am confined on a horizontal plane my set of positions so what is a, a crucial idea the idea is that uh, if the infinitesimal movement do not commute then uh, maybe this is not a theorem it's not like uh, the existence theorem i've showed before uh, uh, maybe we can reach every position so let's say that subriman geometry is uh, something that is uh, um, uh, following these ideas uh, so there is a some class of curves that is uh, interesting and uh, we want to uh, mm, see if we can reach every position and then maybe once uh, I can reach every position from every other uh, I can ask myself uh, how can do this more efficiently as possible of course if you have to park the car from here to here I will not go uh, on the other side of the city and then go back I will try to do this in the best way Okay, when you say best way, you have seen uh, introduction to calculus of variation, so you have seen that you need something to minimize. Okay, this is very natural, even if you move uh, an object from here to here, you are minimizing some, uh, some cost. You are not doing this or doing something more complicated. You are doing some specific uh, movement that is minimizing something. So this is a kind of uh, natural, uh, but uh, from the viewpoint uh, of the car or of the control, we can give some input to the mechanical system to do uh, this um, in, uh, in the best way. Okay, so uh, this was uh, maybe uh, the introduction to, the, to this uh, mm, geometry. And uh, mm, at the same time, uh, maybe before moving to the Eisenberg group, I want to uh, uh, 
uh, give another example of this kind of uh, situations, which is less trivial because, of course, what I've told you is uh, uh, more or less a pedagogical uh, example in the sense that uh, from the very beginning you know already everything and you try to understand a little bit uh, of theory starting from one example. But to see that this is, uh, uh, if you push these kind of things a little bit more, uh, you can get something less trivial. Uh, let's just uh, uh, look to this example. So uh, take two uh, balls that roll uh, one onto uh, the other. Okay, so you have two balls or spheres as you. So you have two, for instance, do like this. Uh, this one has radius R1, this one has radius uh, R2 and R1. And, uh, and um, what you have is a uh, rolling you can roll a sphere onto the other, but um, without, uh, uh, without um, uh, spinning, so without having the possibility of moving the ball uh, let me write without spinning and without sliding. So what does it mean? Uh, let let uh, imagine first the, the simple case when R2 is infinity. In this case, this sphere will be the plane, okay? The second sphere If uh, we have uh, a ball on a plane, uh, so here now unfortunately I have not a ball, but uh, you can think what you cannot do is uh, uh, you can move your ball, but you cannot spin, so you cannot move the orientation of the ball, first ball, let's say, uh, without changing the position. And uh, sliding means that you are moving your ball with fixed orientation, but changing the position. What you can do, you can roll the ball and let uh, the ball uh, go when, uh, like uh, when you are playing uh, uh, pool, for instance. Okay? Uh, so in this case, uh, the configuration space here, uh, I don't know uh, if you can uh, see, uh, but it has dimension 5, because uh, to uh, fix the position of this uh, system, let's say, you need to fix point on one sphere, two coordinates, two, two angles if you wish, on the other one, and once you have fixed the two contact points, you have to fix also another angle, which is the orientation of the two. Okay? More or less, you have two planes, the tangent planes that touch, and you have to fix the, uh, which, which is the angle, uh, which permits to identify one with the other. So, uh, this is a five-dimensional a five-dimensional uh, configuration space. Allowed movements are only two, because uh, if you think of the five movements, uh, we have removed the three, because uh, without spinning is minus one, and sliding you have two uh, independent uh, slides. So uh, only two movements, okay? So in this case, uh, uh, if you wish, uh, if you want to fix some coordinates, you will have a point on the first sphere, a point on the second sphere, and an angle. But allowed movements mix up all the things, okay? So you cannot just uh, change theta, this is uh, no spinning. You cannot slide, this means uh, no pure movement of uh, coordinates without changing also theta, so the, the movements indeed are not uh, as easy to write down uh, immediately without, uh, I mean, if you think you can do it. And then also this computation, if you want to do, is more complicated. But still, if you think, if ever you combine this and you try to mix up in this way uh, allowed movements, uh, you will get out one new movement. Indeed, uh, for symmetry reason, it will be uh, the first one. 
it can be all, only this one. So if you combine the two loud movements, you will get spinning. Indeed, you will be able to get spinning with. Uh, but to, to reach this, you will need some uh, higher order, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, I want to say bracket in the sense of uh, vector fields, but higher order non-commutativity movements. So um, let's go, um, maybe we can, we can go back uh, uh, later uh, on this if uh, there is time. Uh, formally, you can write down what is this five-dimensional object. It's just, uh, uh, it's just uh, maybe I should write it. It's just uh, S2, the sphere of radius R2. You fix the point and then is the group SO3, which fixes the position of a, rig a rigid body. So if you want really to write precisely what is this uh, five-dimensional object, is this. Maybe looks weird to you, but it's uh, uh, just to write uh, a formal object and not uh, just words. Uh, OK, so mm, and here uh, the question uh, of uh, mm, reaching all position, all configuration starting from a uh, fixed one uh, is not trivial. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if you, if you have a guess. Is it possible uh, to uh, reach from a fixed configuration all other configurations? It is not, uh, I mean, what would you guess? Of course, we have also parameters R1 and R2. So the, the, the answer could be uh, different in terms of the radius. So maybe I will not give the uh, answer immediately and you can, uh, and you can think a little bit, uh, at least from an intuitive uh, viewpoint. And uh, uh, there is a way to use uh, the things I will explain later to give true answer, but uh, I'm not sure this four hours and a half will be enough to do all the computation. So maybe I will not go into the details, but we can discuss about this. Okay, so uh, are there any questions uh, about uh, all this? Because somehow we will change a little bit uh, the topic now. It's possible to ask if there are questions. Of course. <laughs> No questions? The distribution in the R2 times S1. Ah, ah, what? Is the distribution in R2 times S1 a contact manifold or something like that? Yes, yes. It is, but I did not want to use this uh, word. But uh, feel free to uh, uh, ask uh, other questions. And also to tell me if it's too easy to too slow, to English, I don't know. <laughs> OK, so uh, now let us move to Eisenberg group. So Eisenberg group uh, at the beginning will be a group. So I decided to follow the, um, the wording Heisenberg group. So I will present it as a group and then uh, uh, state a few things and then try to go back to this uh, viewpoint and uh, do some link, if possible, and uh, some geometry. OK, so maybe I will try to... Uh, so the possibility of uh, getting that one is also related to... Ah, oh no, it's OK. I'm not, uh, I'm not that tall, but I can still... <laughs> So, Heisenberg group. So, 
So the Eisenberg group actually uh, is a specific example of this uh, geometry I want to discuss, but uh, motivation of, for studying this uh, specific group comes from many different areas of mathematics. So you can, uh, I think, recognize the name of Eisenberg as uh, related to uh, quantum mechanics certainly, and uh, uh, also this uh, kind of group I will speak about, it will be related to isoperimetric problems, which are some kind of variational problems, so can enter in the, in the area of calculus of variations, and uh, there is also relations with uh, uh, partial differential equations, because uh, somehow um, uh, I'm not sure I will discuss this, but uh, on this group uh, you can define uh, uh, differential operator which plays the role of the Laplacian that you may have encountered and, and uh, define so some important partial differential equations. And in this case, uh, uh, it gives uh, some uh, operator which has some uh, uh, which is somehow degenerate. So also the geometry we are describing is somehow degenerate and corresponds to some degenerate uh, operator. Let's say I will not uh, go maybe more in details now, but uh, we will see how much time remains after today and what to uh, speak about tomorrow. So uh, just to say that it is related with many different areas of mathematics and I will just uh, give you one viewpoint. And um, so what is Eisenberg group? I will call it H. It is a group of matrices. So nothing really deep to know to understand what is this group. It's uh, uh, the group of matrices which are triangular and have one over oh, the diagonal. So real Eisenberg group has real coefficients. So this is of course a group uh, in the sense that if you multiply two elements of this form, the product has still this form. So it's a group with respect to product of matrices. And um, but uh, uh, to um, uh, play with this, I want uh, to see uh, this group H as uh, exponential of something, okay? So I want to see this H as exponential of some L. So I will first say what is L and then what is exponential. So L is this set here. Almost the same, but with zero on the diagonal. So you may wonder why we introduce this L. The reason is that this is a vector space. And so it's a linear algebra immediately. So this is not linear space. So, uh, Three-dimensional vector space. What I'm writing. So, uh, what is uh, exponential? Uh, maybe you know what uh, I think you know, but I will write it again. So, exponential of a matrix A is uh, simply the, uh, I mean, you take the formula, the, the, the expansion for the function, the exponential function, and then put as an argument the matrix. So you will have identity plus a plus a squared over 2 plus a cube over 3, etc. Okay? You have a series which is always uh, convergent and uh, defines a new matrix. So you take a matrix A, you can define its uh, exponential. Uh, in this way, and uh, uh, in this case, exp from L uh, go to H, and uh, somehow uh, gives uh, coordinates on H. So is a uh, is a diffeomorphism between uh, between the two. Okay, uh, okay. 
is a, a diffeomorphism. Uh, what is uh, the um, the exponential of uh, um, of uh, matrix in L? We can compute it. It's easy. is is uh, identity okay plus the matrix okay and then we have to add the matrix square so uh, indeed you see uh, what is happening is that uh, if you do this matrix here, to power 3, this will be 0, it's an important matrix. And if you do this uh, to power square, you will get, I will just copy the formula because it's very easy, a term here, which is 1 half xy. So the only non-zero element of this matrix square is, uh, is this element and is uh, x times y. Okay, and uh, starting from power three is uh, zero. So this uh, uh, this uh, series is actually a polynomial that ends up after two terms. And uh, uh, so uh, now uh, let us write the product of the Eisenberg group in terms of uh, these coordinates. So what I'm doing, I'm saying. H is the image uh, under exponential of L. I can read everything in the group on L. And uh, the idea is that uh, L is a vector space, so it would be uh, more easy to see things somehow as in R3. Uh, but uh, the product will read uh, differently. It is not a standard product or product you have in mind on R3. So what is, uh, what is this? You have to, um, if you want, uh, so more or less what we are saying, if we are trying to write we are trying to, to, uh, to solve this problem. So uh, x of uh, first matrix, let's, uh, let's call this a prime. So that we have 1, 1, 1, x, y, z, 1, 1, 1, x prime, y prime, z prime. If you do this uh, a little bit carefully, you will have uh, that here nothing strange happens. And uh, uh, here and in this place, you will have, uh, so in this place, of course, you will have this times this, okay? So it will be z prime plus z uh, plus uh, this. Uh, uh, no, I said something wrong because, uh, I'm sorry. Here, there is this, and here, there is this. Okay, now it's better. And so uh, there you have z plus one half xy plus z uh, pl uh, plus one half x prime y prime. And then there is also this uh, x y prime. So it's z plus z prime plus x y prime and then one half of this guy x y plus x prime y prime. This is what you can read there. 
okay? But then you want uh, this to be uh, exponential of something. Understand what to put there. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, very difficult. Uh, maybe I will uh, leave you the computation as an exercise and I write the answer. So I should put this over. So, uh, uh, at the end, we write the product as follows. So, of course, I identify the element of L with the triple x, y, z, so I will have x, y, z times x prime, y prime, z prime equal to what do we have here indeed in the two position close to the diagonal I will need to have x plus x prime and y plus y prime okay this is a force And then the last one we'll get out after uh, computation uh, because uh, it will it should be uh, so here you put x plus x prime y plus y prime and here you should put something such that uh, this plus one half this times this equal to that okay so the computation is not uh, is not difficult and you see that is this Okay, so with this identification, uh, with this is an identification, so H is a group and uh, a smooth, let me say, a smooth space, if ever you like the word, you can say manifold, because uh, is uh, the image under a smooth map, the exponential, of R3. Okay, so you can think uh, uh, like uh, if you have uh, uh, R2 and then you have a smooth map F, you can think uh, this is a surface. Okay, so this is L, this is H, and this is exp. So the idea is that it's a smooth uh, space, nice space, and uh, but has also other properties because it's not only, so it's a group and it's a smooth, okay? But there is also compatibility between these two because the group operation is C infinity. Uh, and the product is C infinity. And let me say also the inverse of an element is C infinity. Okay? So these are the properties of what is called uh, Lie group. So uh, what is a Lie group? Is a group which has a, a, a smooth structure, so it's a smooth space, and compatibility between algebraic and smooth structure, okay? If you only have uh, 
uh, topological structure, you will have a topological group. Okay? If on the group you can put a topology and the operation group operation inverse is continuous, because you have a topology, it will have, you will have a topological group. If you add more, so you can say what is smooth, what is this infinity, and the compatibility goes up to this, uh, this infinity level, in this case it's called a Lie group. So a Lie group is a very rich structure because it's uh, at the same time, let's say, geometric and algebraic, and the two things stay together, wells and love each other. Okay? This is not only uh, the only property of this group because, uh, mm, uh, of course, uh, since we have a group, uh, we have uh, one uh, operation that is uh, what is called the left multiplication that I will write down. But this uh, group has also another interesting property, which is the homogeneity. Okay, so I will uh, I will write it uh, here. It seems good. Uh, good point to write this. So the first, uh, uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, there is uh, so two operations. Somehow I don't know if it's good to write operations. Maybe it's good uh, to maps. The first one is uh, the left, uh, what is called left multiplication. or left translation. Somehow, I will justify this word translation, of course, left multiplication will, will be very clear. So if you fix a point P in H, which can be a matrix or uh, a triple, if you look uh, in this way, then uh, you have a, a, a map from H to H, which sends a point Q in P times Q. So the L stands for left and the multiplication of P is on the left. Okay? So that's the idea. So uh, left multiplications uh, permits uh, somehow uh, to uh, move uh, every point uh, to the origin. Somehow there is a way to uh, translate our space. Uh, I will make the, the, the analogy in, in one minute. Let me write down the second first, because maybe the analogy will be more clear. Uh, the second is uh, a dilation. Dilation, which is an automorphism of uh, the group. Automorphism of the group. Maybe this should be like this, uh, which I call uh, delta epsilon from H to H, and uh, delta epsilon sends uh, x, y, z to epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon square z. Okay? What does it mean that is automorphism? It means that delta epsilon of P times delta epsilon of Q is delta epsilon of P times Q, okay? It's compatible with the group operation. And uh, uh, what are these two uh, things? Uh, maybe it sounds weird, but if you think to... Uh, another Lie group that you know very well, which is Rn with the uh, addition as an operation. Of course, it is a group, it is smooth, everything is compatible, it's a Lie group. What are these two objects? So L of, uh, let me call uh, V a vector, is the map that sends a vector W in V plus W, so it's a true translation. Left, because it's on the left, but in this case it's commutative, while uh, here uh, it's not. And uh, the uh, dilation, uh, in this case, uh, uh, let's say that uh, 
it's a tree, but uh, well, let's write just x as the element of Rn is just epsilon times x. So the relation, which is uh, uh, the relation of the same factor in each size. Uh, here is not the same factor. Uh, you will recognize that uh, there is epsilon, epsilon, epsilon square. Maybe this reminds you uh, to that computation we did that uh, we move uh, of uh, time t along uh, the admissible directions and we get uh, time t squared in the non-admissible. So there, uh, there will be something similar here. So indeed uh, what is um, what I will do now is exactly to uh, produce a structure on this Eisenberg group that is similar to the one we had for the car. Okay, so we have, uh, what, what is interesting is uh, uh, that these two properties uh, um, uh, tells, you, tells us that, uh, uh, for instance, in Rn, uh, the fact that there is this compatibility with this operation somehow tells uh, that uh, uh, every point is the same, somehow, we can translate, with the left translation we can uh, translate all the properties to every point, and uh, also the homogeneity of uh, the space, because we have the compatibility with this uh, operation. So in this, uh, in this case, for the Eisenberg group, there is a similar property that somehow uh, tells you that uh, uh, all the reasoning you can do at one point, then you can repeat at every other point just by multiplying with the left translations. Okay, so uh, maybe we have time to do uh, another step. So, um, are there questions? So up to now is, uh, let's say, more algebraic, maybe as an uh, investigation on this space. So now we try to put some geometry, and so we uh, consider curves in this uh, 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 group H. And I uh, will do this, uh, where I will do this, uh, maybe here, in the middle. Okay, so um, let us now consider a curve, uh, let's say C1 curve, or oh, maybe C infinity. C1 is enough, I need to compute one derivative, but uh, I like C infinity, so uh, C infinity curve, that will be define on some interval that I will denote 0t uh, and with value in h. So gamma of t at each t will be uh, uh, the exponential of uh, some matrix uh, x of t, y of t, z of t. And at the same time it will be something of this kind with a of t, b of t, C of t, with function x of t, etc., all functions are uh, uh, regular, okay? And uh, um, the first uh, thing uh, we can uh, notice is uh, the following. We can write it uh, as a lemma. And uh, uh, is this, uh, is that if uh, gamma from 0 t to h uh, is uh, a smooth curve, uh, then gamma prime of t, which is a matrix, so I am differentiating all the, the coefficients here, writes as uh, gamma of t, v of t, for some uh, 
uh, v of t in L. Okay, so we can write uh, we can write this uh, um, uh, this formula, and v will be some uh, some curve that if you start with the uh, infinity, then this v will be infinity. If you just use the c one, this v will be continuous, and uh, mm. and so this is a, a characterization somehow of uh, of uh, of curves that are in uh, in h and uh, this also shows somehow the interplay uh, between uh, the group h and l uh, h is a lie group l is called the algebra because somehow corresponds to uh, uh, let's say the tangent space of this, uh, so it's related with the differentiation somehow. So I'm not uh, explaining exactly uh, the, the link between these notions, but uh, maybe it's useful to uh, associate uh, these words in some specific example, if, even if you did not uh, uh, still meet. Uh, it uh, could be useful later when you will. And uh, um, so uh, this is not difficult. The proof goes uh, with the computation. So uh, the proof is a computation, but um, it is somehow useful to uh, to do it because uh, you may think that then the curves. Indeed, what is happening is that not only if you have a curve then gamma prime is gamma of t v of t, but also if you gave uh, me v of t, uh, I can solve the differential equation and get uh, a curve that stays in H. Of course, I have to fix initial uh, datum, uh, I will fix uh, the origin, for instance, the, the, the unit of the group, and uh, mm, which is, by the way, the origin uh, here. Okay, So maybe this is uh, interesting to point out that the exponential of zero is the identity, which is the unit of the group. And um, uh, and so what, uh, what I'm saying is that more or less a curve in, uh, in the space of H is characterized by this V, which has uh, three entries, and can be thought a little bit as a control, okay? Uh, in the sense that uh, by changing this V, I will change my curve gamma. And so uh, about these three entries, we will kill one and uh, get with the two controls in the three-dimensional space and go back to uh, the situation we had before. So let, let us do this computation. So the first thing, uh, so first notice that uh, if you do this, uh, if you do this, uh, so this is not difficult, I just write down the result. This is minus a minus b minus c plus a b. Okay, this is easy. And then what uh, what you do to prove this? Uh, I can uh, I can uh, uh, compute gamma minus one gamma prime. Okay. So if I know that gamma is in H, uh, it is invertible. If it's smooth, I can differentiate. This makes sense. I compute it, and uh, I have this. This is uh, gamma minus 1. So here, A, B, and C are a function of time. I will not write here of t uh, teach uh, line, but it's this, OK? And uh, then you multiply with gamma prime. What is gamma prime? Is a prime, b prime, uh, c prime, b prime. And the result is this. So finally you check that you have zero here by hand. And here is interesting, you have this a prime, b prime, c prime minus a b prime. Okay? So this is the computation. This is uh, the actual v, 
v of t is something of this form, okay? So here the three entries are somehow the three controls, actually, okay? The three controls. Because v has three entries, we can think to, to uh, three controls. In, uh, in uh, uh, view of uh, this homogeneity, let's say, epsilon, epsilon, epsilon squared, uh, you may uh, uh, see that this, uh, which corresponds to the z part, uh, uh, is uh, somehow um, the control that uh, I, will, I will remove, okay? Because it will be the one that could be uh, recovered by using the two other, indeed, okay? And, uh, and indeed, uh, so let me first uh, rewrite uh, this condition. So I will use one of these uh, uh, here, maybe, to rewrite this condition. Because here it is expressed, uh, this C prime minus AB prime is expressed in terms of A, B, and C. I want first to write in terms of X, Y, and Z. So A actually is X, B is Y, and this is this, okay, from the exponential coordinates. So C prime minus A B prime, what is this? Is this prime, Z prime plus one half X prime Y plus X Y prime minus A B prime. Okay, uh, so what do we get? We get z prime minus, mm, what do we get? Let's check. So we have z prime plus one half, so x prime y, and this gets here. You agree? Okay, so now uh, I give a definition. When you give a definition, nobody can complain because it's a definition. And so we define a Carnot curve inside uh, uh, the Heisenberg group. Is a curve for which this is zero. Let me write in this way. I do not write uh, I do not write uh, exponential such that uh, z prime of t is equal um, to one half uh, so this quantity equal to zero. I'll change sign here. Okay, so uh, what does it mean here? You have to think, uh, as I've said, in terms of uh, the previous lemma, which is saying an arbitrary curve in H is a curve for which I can specify the V. The V has three entries, okay? If I kill one of the three, I will just have two entries, so two controls in the spirit of the previous uh, example. And the control I'm killing is uh, the one that corresponds to the uh, 
entry uh, line one uh, uh, column uh, number three okay because he is uh, the one that in the uh, homogeneity uh, corresponds to power two somehow this could think to this as a justification and uh, or if you wish uh, we take this just a fact and uh, now we have in we are in three dimensional space and uh, we have only uh, somehow a restricted class of curves to work with and um, and uh, and we want to understand the geometry of course uh, what are the questions we we are interested in the first one is uh, Uh, can we uh, connect every two points by a Carnot curve? In H. And then the uh, second one is uh, what is the geometry somehow behind so is there a metric structure so now what um, maybe it's a good point uh, to to stop so i will just make some conclusion uh, briefly so uh, first question is uh, uh, similar to the previous so uh, uh, can we connect two points with these curves yes no we will see and once we have uh, answer for these questions what is the geometry behind so we have spoken uh, just about uh, uh, restriction on the class of curves and connecting points but now uh, in what follows we introduce uh, uh, geometry so distance and try to understand uh, what is the uh, uh, first of all what is geometric meaning we will see that there is a link with the isoperimetric problem uh, on the plane and uh, the classical one let's say the one for which the solutions are circles and and then uh, what is uh, somehow the the properties what are the properties of uh, of this uh, geometry so we will speak for instance about uh, the dimension of the space as a metric space and we will see that this is uh, not uh, three it is higher so we will discover this uh, later maybe it's a good point uh, to stop and we continue later Thank you, Davide. Are there any questions or comments? Yes. So I'll try to use the microphone, but I'm not sure. I'm not able to use it. Try. Okay, maybe you can speak in a loud voice. Okay. Thank you. What shield A, B, and C has been taken into real number? Could we generate that into a unit train to get some geometric information? Sorry, sorry. So, uh, Could we generalize, um, generalize uh, ABC into a unit ring? Uh, unit ring? And work uh, on this? Uh, uh, maybe from what concerns the, um, the algebraic viewpoint, but indeed in what I've presented, this ABC, it was a kind of um, simplification because uh, in some sense it was it corresponds to uh, flows flows of vector fields so of course you can uh, of course you can uh, you can try to play the same but then what to i mean to do a b a minus one b minus one this is a, a commutator in algebra it's uh, i mean it's used but then what i did i used the fact that i work with curves and so with the smooth parameter and do Taylor expansion to get out uh, some extra information. So you need some smooth, uh, at least for to use this approach, you need some smooth uh, structure. Then uh, probably there are some generalization of this, but uh, I could not uh, be more precise uh, right now. Are there any other questions or comments? Otherwise, we leave the questions to the end of the next lecture when we will see some metric, maybe. And thank you, David. So we resume at 3.30. Okay, thank you.